know, pretty much, you know, saying that, especially after Kyrie got hurt, then uh, the series was over. I think our guys are um, using that as motivation. Um, I have, I guess, a little bit of it, but I have a lot of motivation um, already to just, uh, you know, be a part of the greatness and be a part of this and be a part of this atmosphere. And, um, you know, and my motivation is to make sure my guys are ready and prepared every night we step on the floor. And, um, and I have some other motivation that I won't talk about right now, but um, I have so many uh, different things though to worry about than uh, you know being an underdog or or you know guys count us out. So Le- LeBron says he has uh, secret motivations that he doesn't want to talk about right now. He hopes, in fact, that obviously he can get the title so that he can talk about those motivations. He said that to the Cleveland Plain Dealer, Stephen A. If you had to guess, which we are doing, what do you think that motivation is? Well, I would say this, um, <clears throat> venture to guess that obviously when you lose in the NBA Finals, as he has three times, um, being around your family, your children, your wife, your loved ones, the off seasons are very, very difficult. And if you know anything about men, when our lives are difficult, we tend to make life difficult for other people. <laughs> That's just a given. But knowing some of the other things that are going on in the NBA I suspect that there's more to his statement, and I'm not sure he'll ever admit it, even if he does win the chip. But I happen to know LeBron James well enough and know some of his confidants well enough to know that this is something that has crossed his mind. You know, to get back to Cleveland, he had to depart South Beach. And you have to remember that in South Beach lies an individual by the name of Pat Riley. Mm. Pat Riley is the winner within. Pat Riley is a champion five times over. Pat Riley is a champion as a player, a coach, an executive. He knows a thing or two about winning. And by the way, it wasn't just D. Wade who played a role in LeBron James winning a championship. Pat Riley would venture to say he had something to do with that too. And when LeBron James decided to leave, in Pat Riley's world, you left him. You left him high and dry. You are officially the enemy. And so when you look at it from that perspective, and then you have a guy like D. Wade, who outside of LeBron's crew uh, is like a brother to LeBron, and you've got him going through what he's going through right now with Miami, where he may end up leaving South Beach. He might end up going to L.A. He may end up coming to Cleveland. Stay tuned. In the event that things don't work out in Miami, and make no mistake, D.A.'s prefer- D. Wade's preference is that he remains in Miami, but he just wants to be treated according to his definition of fairness. Uh, if you're a LeBron James, it's rubbing you the wrong way. And in all likelihood, it's rubbing you the wrong way because you believe that part of the reason D. Wade is going through this is because of you, meaning LeBron. You remember, they're still tight. Pat Riley don't like that. Pat Riley doesn't want D-Wade tight with LeBron. Pat Riley doesn't want to see D-Wade on TV rooting for LeBron. Pat Riley doesn't want to see D-Wade wishing him well. Okay, now, now, that kind of stuff that I just repeated, that ain't guessing. I'm telling you what I know. Y'all figure out how I know. But I'm telling you what I know. Okay, Pat Riley ain't happy about that. I'm not faulting, and nobody should fault Pat Riley for that. He's a winner. And usually to be a winner, you have to have that kind of attitude. It's us against the world. You're either with us, you're against us. And that that is Pat Riley's mentality, and he's not wrong about that in the slightest. But there is something there to be said that D. Wade and LeBron are so tight that part of what's going on right now is that Pat Riley, he ain't eager to to in, you know to further ingratiate himself with D Wade. You got to remember when D Wade when LeBron departed last summer to come back to Cleveland. D Wade was with LeBron a few days earlier. Miami Heat are sitting there wondering what's LeBron going to do, and they calling up D Wade. You were just with him, and D Wade swearing that he didn't know. Well, Pat Riley and Miami Heat doesn't believe they don't believe that he didn't know. Mm. They believe he knew exactly what LeBron was. Now D Wade will tell you he didn't know. But Pat Riley and them don't believe that. So all of these things, whether directly or indirectly, Mm -hmm. has something to do with LeBron. And I believe LeBron is cognizant of that. And I think that's just an additional thing on top of a multitude of other things, of course, that have nothing to do with Miami or Pat Riley. Mm -hmm. But I think that's one of the things that contributes to the level of motivation that he has.
I agree with your take on this. <sighs> However, I, I have a hard time believing that LeBron James would go ahead and win this championship and blast Pat Riley publicly. I just because said he, he wouldn't. Yeah, I, I know, said I, don't I know, believe but, that, yeah. but but he's too classy to do that. Right. So his remark to the Cleveland Plain Dealer that we saw in today's paper that I, I hope I go ahead and close this deal. I'm paraphrasing right. how I said it, but sure. I, I hope I go ahead and win this so that I can make this public, this secret or private motivation. Well, that would indicate it's not Pat Riley to me. It may be more along the lines of your first one about family and, and how much it would mean to his, his loved ones in his inner circle. But here's, here's my point. If I step away from this, and you alluded to this, you can't condemn Pat Riley for holding a grudge against not at LeBron all. James. You just can't. Because remember the speech he made? Right yeah. after they lost by a record margin to my what was the San record? Antonio what Spurs. Was 71 record? points over yes. five okay. games. Thank you okay. very much. We forgot. Five games. Uh -huh. Last year, my Spurs Got beat it. LeBron James' they team. They did. Okay. Thank you very much you for reminding it. me yeah. of that so I could remind <laughs> the, the audience of that. Just after that. Pat Riley gave a post-mortem the next mm -hmm. week. Do you remember this? And yep. he said, based, I'm going to paraphrase again, but he said, the great ones don't run from this. And he alluded to the Spurs, mm -hmm. who the year before, thanks to Game 6 mm -hmm. and Ray Allen, do you remember that? Yeah, had, had <laughs> said, let's stay together, let's face it, and let's fix it. Let's right the wrong of Game 6, which did they ever right the wrong last year in the finals? So he was basically saying, I think directly to LeBron James, don't don't turn tail and run from this. You stay right here. You come back and you fix it. And then remember, after LeBron left, remember the remark of a few weeks ago? We, we don't have any more smiling faces with hidden agendas. Boy, that was a shot at LeBron James. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Okay. So, again, Pat Riley is the ultimate competitor on the level of yes. a coach slash GM. Yeah. And even as a player, I thought he was. He was an but, overachiever. But still... He, he is burning inside to get even with the king. You well, talk about listen, don't hate the king, tell Pat Riley Listen, that. listen, Pat Riley is one of those dudes. Pat Riley is one of those dudes where he's a winner, man. And he's the kind of guy where don't, don't, don't measure his LeBron's success mm -hmm. over Miami based on one year. Pat Riley's got to fight. Pat Riley was contemplating retirement mm -hmm. until LeBron left. Yep. He's accomplished everything and stayed on and was ultra motivated because LeBron left. And I got news for y'all. If, if, if Chris Bosh hadn't gone down, Miami would have met Cleveland in the conference finals with Bosch, with Whiteside, with Lou Aldang, with D. Wade, with Goran Dragic after they acquired... Pat Riley's not standing still. Miami's coming, okay? So, uh, again, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff is something that needs to be mentioned. The other part to it is this. Pat Riley has to accept this reality. The only reason LeBron ever went to South Beach to begin with is because of D-Wade. Mm -hmm. And in the end, one of the biggest reasons he left was because of Pat Riley. Now, again, he's classy where he's not going to admit yep. stuff like that. But one of the biggest reasons he left was Pat Riley. Mm -hmm. And it's always about business with LeBron. And by the way, he's happy to be back. He plans on staying right here in Cleveland, hopefully for the rest of his career. But hold on. Hold on. Let this organization act up. Let this organization for one second think that they can take him for granted. Let him go ahead and win. Because you got to remember something. LeBron James is here to win a championship. He didn't promise you Cleveland forever. He promised you that he was coming back to bring the chip home. So the point is that if he wins the chip, all right, but the organization gets a bit bold and all of a sudden forgets that he's LeBron, all right, and think that they can act differently, don't think that he's stuck here. You better treat him right this time because the last time he was here, the organization and some people associated with it didn't treat him with the respect mm -hmm. and deference he deserved. He's cognizant of that. Okay, that's fine. My final point here is we part ways in our theory on one, one final point, and that's Dwayne Wade's role in this. Mm -hmm. Trust me on this. Dwayne Wade has mixed emotions because LeBron James, because of LeBron James leaving, remember, Dwayne took pay cuts. He sacrificed pay twice for LeBron James to get him there the first time and then to keep him there. And LeBron left Dwayne a little high and dry and now Dwayne is paying the price. And I agree with you. Pat is holding his feet to the fire. But trust me on this one. Dwayne Wade 
knows that he he sacrificed for a LeBron who then went went home, and that's fine. And I'm God bless all of you because you you deserve to have him back. But but it it Dwayne Wade is still paying a price for Dwayne that. Dwayne Wade may be paying a price, but Dwayne Wade is fully aware that the LeBron, LeBron James departure had a hell of a lot more to do with Pat Riley than it had to do with him. Don't think that. Okay, but, but he had already sacrificed to keep LeBron there, and yeah. now he's paying he was, for it. He was willing to do it, but it wasn't like LeBron didn't sit there and and and, and inform him. LeBron never sat there and said to Dwayne Wade, "I'm staying." No, the Wayne Wade knew I agree. that LeBron had his issues but even with to people the last outside moment, of Dwayne I think Wade. Dwayne was and, still a little well, bit surprised by it. He he wasn't surprised. He was disappointed, but he wasn't surprised. And you also mm -hmm. have to remember. LeBron left Cleveland to give him four years. Mm. He owed D-Wade nothing. Yeah, we but leave that's, it there. that's a tough stance. That's we leave it there. Stance. What is the uh, secret motivation? We'll find out if Cleveland gets the chip. When we come back, we're talking about LeBron. Can the Warriors shut him down? That is the question. The debate on the other side of the break. First take in the flats for the NBA Finals. We'll be back in just a moment. Up our special game show with the Cleveland fans talking about none other than the King. LeBron James has been carrying the load for the Cavaliers the first two games. He scored 83 of their 195 points over the first two games. He had 44 points in game one, 39 in game two. So we're talking about how the Warriors defend LeBron James. We're going to ask you to put your coaching cap on, Skip Bayless. Yep. Do you believe that Golden State should change the way they've been defending? Golden's game in Cleveland tonight, or as you, you folks have been calling it, Believe Land. I mm -hmm. like that. Golden, thank you. Golden State has to figure out a way to push the pace, to up the RPM of this game into their kind of game. And the only way I know how to do this is to start trapping LeBron James at three-quarter court or half court. I'm not talking about doubling LeBron James. I'm talking about trapping him quickly, and because he always makes the correct basketball play, get him to give up the basketball and hope it ends quickly in the hands of one of his snipers, JR, James Jones, whoever it is, Shumpert, and that they decide to shoot it more quickly than they usually would. Now, if JR gets hot, it's good night, Golden State. Okay? But, but to me, if, if you keep, if you keep let, letting LeBron James walk the ball up the floor, walk into the offense, walk somebody down into the low post, and score a basket at the end of the shot clock, that is a recipe for two to one Cavaliers. And that's what, okay? You gotta switch that. Can't, you can't let it happen anymore. Well, what you said is not wrong, but your reasons for it may be. What you want to do is try to exhaust LeBron because when he walks the ball up the court, what you're doing is enabling him to get rest while the action is taking place I'll buy that. because he's catching himself a deep breath while he's just walking the ball mm -hmm. up the court instead of being pressured. But I think the other adjustment on top of what you pointed out was I think that Steve Kerr can't be scared to stay big. In other words, if you got Andrew Bogut in the game, he's only averaging three points, but he's averaging eight and a half rebounds. Keep him in the game and make sure it helps limit Cleveland to one shot. Mm -hmm. Because if you if you limit them to one shot, you limit their offensive possessions. Yep, you I force agree. Cleveland to play more on defense. And as a result, that will help neutralize LeBron as well. Part of the reason LeBron is, is being so damaging is because Tristan Thompson is averaging 14 and a half rebounds mm -hmm. a game. He's giving them more possessions. And so if you take away those possessions, then obviously that's another way to neutralize LeBron. So I don't think it's really about doubling him, even though I don't have a problem with that strategy, but I think you have to limit Cleveland to one shot. You have to make sure that you match their size mm -hmm. and their girth down low so they don't get multiple chances at the apple. And I think if you go about doing that, then there's nothing wrong with letting LeBron do his thing because LeBron is shooting less than 40% from the field. So it's not like Golden State's defense is horrific. It's that their offense isn't going. It's more important for them to get their offense going than to improve their defense. Their mm -hmm. defense hasn't been awful. It's just that their offense has been awful, and Cleveland has had too many bites at the apple, mm -hmm. and that's what their problem is. Yeah, I, I like your point because the oddity of game two to me was that Mozgov, who has yeah. been a godsend what, for this team, where'd he go? He, he, well, hang on. Yeah. 
He, he played zero in the yeah. fourth quarter and zero in overtime. How, how did they get away with that? Well, Bogut wasn't in the game. Well, that's why yeah. Moskov wasn't mm -hmm. in the game. Yeah. Because Kerr took Bogut mm -hmm. out to go small, and Cleveland had to match going I'm small. But when he's in the game, you just got to make sure Moskov doesn't outplay Bogut. All right, game three, just a few hours away. We're going to recap picks on the other side of the break. Thank you so much, Cleveland. We'll be right back. But your take, the Twitter results say that Cleveland will win. Did they yeah. get it right? I, I want to say that, in, in a shock to me, this crowd has been even better than our morning I, crowd. It's, it's crazy. unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 30 seconds. I, I, I truly love the city of Cleveland, but yeah. I got to stick with my pick. I got Golden State tonight, 100. <laughs> LeBron's going to do his thing, but either J.R. or Iman Shumpert will come alive offensively. Cleveland will win the night, 99-91. Well, there you have it. The game is tonight on ABC. We'll be back here tomorrow morning at the Flats. Join us if you can. First take on the road for the finals.